السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على آلائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على جميع الأنبياء والمرسلين والأوصياء والصديقين وعترة نبيك الطيبين الطاهرين والخلص من أصحابه المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وما كان لنبي أن يغل ومن يغلل يأتي بما غل يوم القيامة ثم توفى كل نفس بما كسبت وهم لا يظلمون صدق الله العلي العظيم The spirit and the essence of religion is honesty and trustworthiness. This is the fruit of religion. This is the origin of religion. This is the goal of religion. It's to make us people who are honest, people who are trustworthy. When you live with someone who is honest, a husband who is honest, a wife who is honest, a family that is honest, a friend, a co-worker. You enjoy life. You enjoy life to the fullest when people around you are honest people. They are trustworthy. You have peace of mind. You don't fear that someone is going to betray you or backstab you or hurt you. The beauty of this life is when you have honest people around you. And the ugliness of this life is when you live in a community, in a society, in a country where people are dishonest, people are cheating, people are lying, people are not true. Even if you have money, you don't enjoy life. The essence of religion is amana, is honesty. In the battle of Badr, or some commentators, exegists, Mufassirin, say in the battle of Uhud, some Muslims accuse the Prophet of being dishonest. Because the Prophet, when he distributed the spoils of war, Ghanaim, some people were not happy. In every battle, in every war, some of the companions were unhappy, always unhappy, because their goal not to, not to fight the enemy. Their goal is not to be with the Prophet, not to support the cause of God. Their goal of going to the war is to make money, is to make a profit, is to obtain ghanaim. This was their goal. This is how the Prophet lived among some, some of them, not all, some of them who were not changed by Islam who kept their old mentality of jahiliya, who treated Islam as a business. So if I make more money with this religion, I'm going to join. This is why they went to the battlefield with the intention of making money. In Surah At-Tawbah, chapter 9, one of them, God mentions the story of one of them who said to the Prophet, I cannot join the war because I am enchanted with foreign women. The war was against the Roman army. He said to the Prophet, excuse me, I cannot come. The Prophet said, why? You are healthy, you can carry the sword. I see you walking, very healthy. He said, yeah, but my weakness, if I see those blonde women of the Roman, I'm going to lose my faith. I'm going to commit a sin. Look at the excuse. This was some of the people. 
Some people try to paint a picture, beautiful picture, that all of them were pure. Radiyallahu anhum wa ardahum ajma'een. All of them were excellent. No, no. When you read the Quran, you find otherwise. When you read Surah Al-Munafiqoon, Surah Al-Ahzab, Surah Al-Tawbah, Surah Al-Baqarah, Surah Al-Imran, you find otherwise. You find different stories, true stories. Some were excellent, committed, faithful, good, true to their Lord, true to their covenant, and some were materialistic. So they accused the Prophet. A textile was missing. The, 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 the uh, valuable textile was missing after the, the distribution of the spoils of war. So they accused the Prophet of taking it. The Quran answers them. The Quran says in Surah Al-Imran, وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍّ أَنْ يَغُلْ It's not befitting the character of a prophet to defraud, to be dishonest, to betray. He's not. The prophet is honest. So do not accuse him. Do not accuse him of favoritism, that he's favoring some group against the others. He doesn't do that. The prophet is a just leader. He's reliable. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَبِيٍّ أَنْ يَغُلْ وَمَنْ يَغْلُ الْيَأْتِ بِمَا غَلَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And whoever defrauds will bring whatever he obtained by fraud before God on the Day of Judgment. Allah came to the defense of the Prophet. He said he's a leader. And if you, if you do not trust his honesty and his integrity, then why you are following him? He cannot be a leader. He cannot be the messenger of God. He cannot be a leader of com a community if he's dishonest, if he's unreliable, if he's untrustworthy. The prophet is very honest. He is honest when it comes to material things, the amanat of the people, the money, the wealth, the spoils of the war and other things. He's honest. He's trustworthy. He does not violate the rules of God. He does not practice favoritism. He does not steal. He does not betray. He has no corruption. You can trust him when you leave your money with him, your wealth with him, your secrets with him. And also he is trustworthy when it comes to delivering the message of God. He will deliver the entire message. Whatever God commands him, whatever God sends upon him, the revelation, the wahi, he will deliver it without fear. Without fear. Sometimes, in some occasions, the Prophet develops hesitation and worries. And one of them, the day of Ghadir, the day of Ghadir, when God said to him, I want you to appoint Ali ibn Abi Talib, the Prophet was worried. Ibn Abbas says in his tafsir, the Prophet was worried because they're going to accuse Haba ibn Ammih. They're going to accuse him of nepotism and favoritism because Ali his cousin his first cousin so he's appointing him God said to him no I don't want you to to be hesitant or fearful Ya ayyuhal rasulu ballagh ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa in lam taf'al if you are hesitant if you decline to deliver this message and appoint Ali as a successor fama ballaghta risalata you have not you have done nothing for God you have not delivered the message of God and then God gives him peace of mind, assurance. God says, Surely God is going to protect you against the accusation of the people. Do your job and I'm going to protect you. Don't worry. So the Quran says, a person who is in, in, a, in a position of leadership cannot betray, cannot practice deception or cheating or fraud or corruption. He has to be clean. And this is the essence of religion. The essence of religion, The true believers, they remain true, they fulfill their amanat, their trust, and their covenants, their contracts, they remain true to that. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna Allah ya'murukum an tu'addu al-amanati ila ahliha. God commands you 
to give back the amana to its own people. This happened during the conquest of Mecca. During the conquest of Mecca, the keys to the Kaaba, the keys to the main gate of the Kaaba, was held by a polytheist. Polytheist. So they took the keys from him because the Prophet wanted to go inside the Kaaba and demolish and destroy the, the idols inside and at the top of the Kaaba. When the Prophet wanted to give him the keys back, some of the companions said, Ya Rasulullah, he's a polytheist. And now Kaaba, under the control of the Muslims, there is no meaning for you to give the keys back to someone who does not believe in God. Keep the keys with you. He's not a qualified to be the custodian of the Kaaba, the guardian of the Kaaba. Allah sends this message. Can you imagine? Allah orders the Prophet, Inna Allah God commands you, أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها. Take, give him back the keys. He is a polytheist, polytheist, but he has been the custodian for so many generations. Give him back. You took it as an amana. You took it as a loan. You have to give it back to him. أن تردوا الأمانات إلى أهلها. أن تؤدوا الأمانات إلى أهلها. This is the essence of religion. A person comes to Imam al-Sadiq عليه الصلاة والسلام. He said, I trusted an Amin, an honest person with my money. I gave him money. He asked for a loan. I gave him the money. He didn't give it back to me. So what is your explanation? He's Amin. Imam al-Sadiq answered him the following. Remember this answer. Remember this answer when you deal with people. Remember this answer. The Imam said to him, مَا خَانَكَ الْأَمِينَ وَلَكِنَّكَ أَتَمَنْتَ الْخَائِنَ In fact, an honest would not betray you, but you put your trust in someone who's dishonest. You thought he's an honest, but he's not an honest. Someone t told me in one of the states on the East Coast that I have a limited amount of money and I love to give people loan, small loans, $500, $300. And I gave to some people loan, they are not returning it. I said, how did, did you know them? He said, yeah, I know them. They come, they pray. I said, the prayers alone is not an indication of honesty. Many people are praying. <laughs> Many people do pray. The people who murdered Imam Hussein, they did not miss their prayers on the day of Ashura. They did their prayers on time, exactly on time. They did two prayers, Salatul Dhuhr, and after a few hours, Salatul Asr, and they went ahead in murdering the grandson of the Prophet. They didn't miss their prayers. So some people do pray, some people do, do fast. But honesty is something different. Honesty is something different. You have to trust an honest person. Once a person is proven to be honest, he's not going to betray you. And last but not least, the hadith of Amir al-Mu'mineen, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. He said, لا دين لمن لا أمانة له. Someone who is not honest, he does not protect and preserve and maintain amana. He has no faith. He doesn't have faith. Even if he practices, this practice is not helping him. At the time of the Fathul Madain, when the Muslim army, Madain is part of Iraq today, when they were sent to open the country, someone came after the war was ended, Someone came with some wealth in his hand and he said to the leadership, I took this from the battlefield. So they asked him, you took this from the battlefield. The battlefield is over. Why didn't you take this wealth home? Why didn't you take it home? There are no security cameras. So why did you take them home? Nobody's watching you. He said, yes, you are right. If I do not believe in the existence of God, I would have taken it home. But since I know that Allah sees me, watches me, monitors me, I cannot take it home. They praised him. They said, you are a good man. What is your name? Give us your name. He said, I want to remain anonymous because I'm not looking to be, to be a celebrity. I'm not looking for shuhra, for fame. I don't want you to give me my name. This is the real faith. This is the real Islam. This is the real Iman. When we uphold 
and promote and maintain and protect honesty. This is what we have to teach our kids today. If our kids learn to be truthful and honest, they will be successful in their life. This is very important. And these are principles we teach them. We, the parents, have to teach them to our children and pass them to our children. They do not learn them in the school. They do not learn them in the street. They learn them from their parents at home. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal-asri inna al-insana lafi khusrin illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu al-salihat wa tawasaw bil-haqqi wa tawasaw bil-sabr wa sallallahu wa sallam ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ahli baytih al-tayyibin al-tahirin. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونسبحه ونقدسه على ألائه ونعمائه ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك وترحم على محمد وآل محمد كأفضل ما صليت وسلمت وباركت وترحمت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد وصل اللهم وسلم على خلفاء نبيك وأوصيائه وأهل بيته وأحبته علي أمير المؤمنين وقائد الغر المحجلين وعلى البضعة الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين وعلى سبط نبي الرحمة وسيدي شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين عليهم السلام وعلى علي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي والإمام الخلف الهادي المهدي عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه عباد الله أوصي نفسي وأوصيكم بتقوى الله ولزوم أمره بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين يجتنبون كبائر الإثم والفواحش وإذا ما غضبوا هم يخفرون صدق الله العلي العظيم Every human being and every individual experiences a state of anger and wrath in his or her life there is no exception to this when God himself the creator he gets angry God himself gets angry. He says this in the Quran. He says, قَالَ قَدْ سُورَةُ الْأَعْرَافِ قَالَ قَدْ وَقَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ رِجْسٌ Upon you has fallen from your Lord defilements وغضب and anger. God gets angry. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا الْضَالِينَ We recite this. مغضوب Those that God is angry with them. God gets angry. When there is violation, when there is injustice, when there is corruption, when someone is being wronged, God gets angry. God says if a person is being murdered for no reason, willfully, وَمَنْ يَقْتُلْ مُؤْمِنًا مُتَعَمِّدًا عَمْدًا Willfully, for no reason, no justification. فَجَزَاؤُهُ جَهَنَّمَ خَالِدًا فِيهَا This is one recompense. Eternally living in hellfire, وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَلَعَنَهُ وَعَدَّ لَهُ عَذَابًا أَلِيمًا And the wrath of God is upon him, the murderer who murders a single believer for no reason, for no justification. So God himself gets angry. The Anbiya, they get angry. Prophet Musa alayhi salam, God says about him, وَلَمَّا رَجَعَ مُوسَى إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ غَضْبَانَ أَسِفَ He came back to his community after working them and serving them and teaching them and training them and advising them he left for 40 days in the mountain to speak with his lord he came back 90 percent of his jewish community they were worshiping the calf a golden calf can you imagine a teacher who spends several years teaching his kids something and he comes back they believe in something else so he was angry Angry and aggrieved. وَذَا النُّونِ إِذْ ذَهَبَ مُغَاضِبًا Jonah, Yunus, when his community did not listen to him, 
He left them, abandoned them in anger. So they get angry. So don't be surprised if you get angry or I get angry. But there is a difference. There is a difference between two angers, two types of anger. One of them is to be angry for God, for the values, for the human values, human principles. When these human values being violated, being stepped upon, being destroyed, being neglected, when someone, a community, people, country being wronged, you have the right to get angry. To dedicate your emotions for God. So if you are angry, you are angry not for the dunya. You are angry for God. And if you are happy, you are not happy for the dunya. You are happy for God. This is one type of anger. To dedicate when the Prophet used to be angry for what? For missing a meal? No. When he sees violation right before his eyes. Imam Ali alayhi salam was very peaceful, very peaceful. Halim with forbearance. But sometimes, sometimes with some people he gets very frustrated and very angry and he goes after them. For the dunya, for the matters of dunya, he would not get angry. If someone curses him in his face, he's a, he doesn't get angry. He will say to him, I'm forgiving you. As it happened, it happened many times. It happened in Medina, it happened when he was the caliph in Kufa for four years and eight months. It happened. Many people insulted him. He forgave them. He forgave them. But when something, a violation happens against religion, against people, against God, he gets angry. He gets frustrated. The ghadab, the anger that is despised, is not when you get angry for your religion, for your principles. It's when you get angry for the matters of dunya. Matters of dunya. People, when they fight, a husband and wife, two neighbors, two friends, two co-workers, two partners, when they fight over the matters of dunya, umur dunyawiyya, this should be avoided. We should stay away from that. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam says, Man fahalim, whoever is being provoked, provoked by someone, and then he reacts with hilm, with forbearance. Man ughdiba fahalim, wajabat mahabbatuhu ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is incumbent upon God to fall in love with such a person, to love such a person, to adore such a person. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, says, Al ghadabu miftahu kulli shar. Anger is the master key for every evil in this life. I mentioned last time, in some countries, a husband comes back home angry. He gets into a fight with his wife in the middle of the night, and he says to him simply three times, Talik, Talik, Talik. Talik, Talik, Talik. The whole family is being demolished. They have three kids, five kids, you know. And he leaves the house, or he forces her to leave the house. Because of a moment of anger. Imam Ali alayhi salam says, anger is part of madness. al ghadabu varbun min al junoon Ghadab, state of anger, is part of madness. Mental illness. Mental illness. This is why some people, they really need to go for anger management classes. They do. Some people come to me, say it, give me a dua, my husband is angry, my wife. I say, I don't have such a dua. Such a dua, you find it outside when you go for anger management. Go for anger management six weeks, then come and I'll give you a dua. We have to do that. This is the solution. It's not a joke. Some people need anger management. Though they do not accept, they do not agree that there's something wrong with them, but they have to go. They have to go. And then after that, the dua. What do we do at the moment of anger? The best medication, the best remedy, the best ilaj for anger is this book. When you stick to this book, when you read this book, when you read dua, when you sit after the salat, don't leave. One of the good things in the school of Ahlul Bayt is that we have supplications after the, uh, after the prayers. 
We have ta'qibat, ta'qibat salat After every prayer, there is a sp specific dua. This dua is called ta'qibat. Ta'qibat means what you do after the salat. Sit down, relax, do tasbihat al-zahra. This tasbihah, 34 times Allahu Akbar, 33 times Alhamdulillah, 33 times Subhanallah was taught by the Prophet to the closest people to him, Ali alayhi salam and Fatima al zahra alayhi salam. He said to them, when you are tired, when you feel tired, when you feel exhausted, when you have humum, concerns in your mind, resort to this tasbih. It will take the tension away from your life. It relaxes your heart, infuses you with peace, peace of mind, relaxation, tasbihat al-zahra. And tasbihat al-zahra, Imam al-Sadiq says, afdal al-dhikr, the best type of dhikr. The Quran says, اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا. Imam al-Sadiq says, ذكرا كثيرا, an abundance of dhikr, is tasbihah to zahra alayhi salam. After every salat, and there is dua ta'qibat. Humble yourself. This is the remedy for anger. The more we humble ourselves before God, the more we become people of tolerance, people of understanding. We grow in our capacity. Our soul becomes bigger. Our heart becomes bigger. We don't get offended if someone curses you in your face. You don't get. You say to him, "Ghafar Allahu lak." Ghafar Allahu lak. Isa alayhi salam was with his disciples. They said to him, "Ya muallim al khair, alimna ayu al ashya ashad. What is the worst thing in this life? The hardest thing?" He said to them, "Qal." أشد الأشياء غضب الله تعالى. The worst thing is when God is provoked, when God gets angry. In دعاء كميل لأنه لا يكون إلا عن غضبك وانتقامك وسخطك وهذا ما لا تقوم له السماوات والأرض. Heaven and earth does not cannot stand before God's wrath and God's anger. So they said to him, فقالوا فيما يت how can we avoid making God angry? He said, the answer, listen to the answer. He said, the best way to avoid provoking God and making him angry, you do not become angry yourself. Try to control, restrain your, own, your, your anger. They said to him, what are the things that instigates Anger makes people angry, provokes them to be angry. He said the three things. Number one, al al kibar, pride, self conceited, vanity, insolence. This is number one. When a person sees himself better than others, above others, he has sense of entitlement, that person becomes easily becomes angry. The second, he said, what tajabbur. Tajabbur, being tyrannical, being in control. Some husbands, when they are in control in their families, they control every step of his family. Even when they breathe, they have to take permission from his majesty. This person becomes easily angry, easily provoked. This is the second. And the third, nas, devaluing, belittling people. When I am always above those people. Those people are down. Those people are not worth it. Those people are below me. Those people do not deserve respect. This thing also is going to instigate anger. Let's avoid anger. Let's really avoid anger. Let's learn forbearance, hilm, to be always calm, always calm. Among you now, among you, I can see some people, I know, I've been knowing them for 30 years. Very peaceful. I wish I can learn from them. Even at the time of a crisis, even at the time of tension, they control their calm. Alhamdulillah, this is the best gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The best gift from Allah. Mu'mineen, today we lost an honorable lady in our community, Sister Elizabeth Garcia. Uh, She's from the Latino Muslim community who embraced the school of Ahl al-Bayt She died this morning. And also, yesterday we lost the son of Hussein Hatem, Hussein Rajab, Hatem restaurant, his son Mihran. So 
I want you to join me in reciting Surah Al-Fatiha for their soul. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm ad-Din. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ahdina al-Sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladhin al-Amta alayhim ghayr al-Maghdub alayhim wa al-Dhalim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع لهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات وعجل في فرج قائدنا ومولانا وسيدنا وإمامنا صاحب العصر والزمان وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات ثواب الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد